All right, YouTubers, I want to clean out my refrigerator thing, but I'm also going to do something else. I'm going to show you uh, a whole list of how much power do things use. So let me get this case. That's the case. All right, now let's look inside. I'm going to clean it a little bit. I told a story once that this cover had been put on upside down, and way back in there, there's a hole that drains this out in case water gets in there. Well, that was plugged up, and water was backing up in here, and it was getting inside the RV, and it drove me crazy. And I figured out it followed the water lines. So, uh, all right, we're going to clean this out, and we're going to do something here. So this video is going to be about how much power things use. And we're going to figure out how much power this refrigerator uses. It's the... Uh, it's the normal domatic little refrigerator that you find in most class B's. An older one. This is again, this is a 99. I think it'd be interesting to know. And this is where you plug your refrigerator in. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside, turn the refrigerator off. Then, I'm, then I got a little wattage meter. I'm going to plug it in there, and we're going to see. We got the meter. And after we do this, we're going to test a whole bunch of things. Okay, I turned it off. All right, we can hear the noise it's making that is turned off now, a little ticking. Okay, so we're gonna unplug. Okay. And then what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the extension cord and bring it around and do it that way. I'll plug the meter in. Now we're gonna plug the fridge in. And this is another way to say something goes wrong in your RV, you can use an extension cord to keep your refrigerator going if you need to. So let me, uh, let's see, we got nothing going on. And I'm going to go turn it on. So it's on, and it's using 180 watts. Now I'm not going to leave it hooked up there forever to see if it changes as it keep it for a couple of minutes. Now again, something very important to know. It's not all about watts. I'm not an electrician. As someone famous in uh, some movie, Running Scared. It's not the watts, it's the amps that get you. But... If you ever had an issue to to say, well, instead of using propane to run this, I'm going to try to run it with power, and I don't want other things around the RV draining your limited battery or something like that. So it might be interesting for you to know how much power your refrigerator uses. And a lot of people wouldn't think that you can also, you know, again, trying to save uh, power drain on stuff, or if something goes wrong in your RV, that you can hook an extension cord up and run your refrigerator that way. I say it's pretty safe to say that this is uh, just around 100, under 180 watts. Alright, YouTubers, I got a whole bunch of other things I'm going to try to show you how much power they use. Again, I'm on shore power, so on this specific trip it's not a big issue to me, but I always like to know just in case. Let me get clean in this too, and then we'll move on to other stuff. Alright, so I know it hurts to clean things either. You should always clean things. Since we're here, I've cleaned down in there, and with cleaning goes inspecting, you know, make sure you don't have bugs making nests and stuff, or little rodents having moved in and saying, This is my home. You clean things. Hold on, I'm gonna put some water in there. This is not actual bottled water, this is water out of a bottled water bottle. See that dripping? That's where that drain hole is that got plugged up. There was a lot of water in there. So, I cleaned it. Ooh, see we found some more back stuff under there. Alright, I'm gonna get another one. I cleaned it, and I also know I'm not plugged up. Alright, seriously, I'm gonna stop cleaning stuff when I go Look at how much more power other things use. Now what I'm going to go do is uh, turn it off. 
I'm gonna record it so we'll see it going off. Okay, it powers off. Until it's off. It's got that click in it. I know that's supposed to happen and there's a fancy name for it, but I'm gonna plug it back in and I'm gonna go turn it back on. Okay, all done. See, it's easy. You can do this stuff. That little uh, thrift store, my heat, a small heater, and it uses 194, we'll call it 200 watts. Oh, it's going up. We'll call it 240 watts to be safe. It's, it's bouncing around. I'm making soup right now and this little electric burner on full blast is showing that it's using 687 watts. I have a few other things that I'm going to make a compilation video on this trip of how much stuff uses, how much power stuff uses. Again, on full blast, that little cheapo electric hot plate. Right, we're plugged in there. If you follow that up, we're charging the GoPro. How much does it take to charge a GoPro? 5.6 watts, in case you wanted to know. This is the new Wave Mini. It is on, usually about 750 it starts, and when it's running, it's on high right now. It runs at 720 watts. The Mini uses less power than the regular larger New Wave oven. All right, since it's so damn cold, it's colder than it was this winter. It's in the 40s. Turn this heater on. Let's see what it says. It is using... 1060 it started about 1100 it's going down to about 1050 watts so if you're cold in your RV and you want to use a little space heater this one by Sunbeam so there you go some people might have a battery pack good enough to run that for a while but again shore power but that's how much power this uses there'll be more things all right, my 12 volt cooler is running through an AC adapter since I'm on shore power and it uses and it uses about 62 watts it looks like. All right, so if you need to know how much stuff uses, that's how much a 12 volt cooler uses. All right, more of the how much power do things use. I'm going to charge my laptop. It's a Dell. Hold on. So it's on and charging about 40 watts. All right, YouTube has just plugged in the Ivation Mini Dehumidifier. It uses about 20 watts. For me, I think uh, in a small RV, in any RV, that's that's a wattage. No matter what power source you're using, that's worth it. All right, this is kind of a twofer. This is uh, how much power does stuff use, and this is also a thrift store fan I got. All right, so we're plugged in. All right, we're on low, 26 watts. Medium. It's about 31, 32 watts. And there goes high. Just under 38 watts. So if you're, uh, let me turn it off. So if you're looking to try to keep your RV cooler, whether you're using shore power, like I am, or uh, running off of batteries, that's how much this uh, Honeywell fan uses. And it kicks out really good air. So, uh, yeah, there you go. All right, now we're just going to play with stuff. This is my Duracell battery pack. This is a 12 volt adapter. You plug it in here. And it's using 2.8 watts just to use it. And I showed that I uh, charged it with my solar panel, but I forgot my AC adapter to charge it. So I'm plugging in a cord. And I'm going to plug this in over here and see if we get it to charge. Yep, jumped up and it's charging it. It bounces around a lot while it's charging it. I think it might be close to fully charged. So we'll see. I'll let it go for a little bit. This is a uh, little clip fan that I use, 110. I usually keep it up there and running. And sometimes even when I dry camp, I run it off my battery pack because it doesn't use that much power. I also have a 12 volt one that I use more often when I'm on dry. 
but I use my uh, Duracell battery pack a lot of times. You can see it doesn't use a lot of power. Uh, 10.7 watts, that's on low. Turn it on high, and it's 13 and a half watts or so. So if you want to charge a little USB, little bitty USB battery pack, that takes 5.3 watts. Okay, here we go with the induction cooktop. It is on low, and it's using... See how it bounces around? We'll go to medium low. Bounces around again. We haven't seen over 700 yet. And we're going to go to medium. There's 787. Staying true. Just under 800. Medium high. Call that 920. 914 on high, which is 425 degrees. See, it's staying about the same heat. Okay, so that's high. I'm going to do max sear, which is about as good as it goes. So for all these, the induction cooktop pretty much stayed under 1,000 watts. Now I'm on shore power now, so I don't have to worry about how much wattage. And as I've said before, I have dry camped and used this, but I ran my generator to do it. I mean, it would take a pretty, pretty serious battery system and to be able to do it without running your generator. Now, when I was dry camping, I usually just used my grill, you know, but the few times that I would use anything electric, I would run the generator and I would basically plan the day for that. Say, okay, I'm going to run the generator for an hour or two. And during that time, I'm going to cook. I might use the vacuum. I'm going to recharge all my batteries. I'm going to do stuff like that. But induction cooktop is fantastic when you are on shore power saves you your propane money if you're already paying for a campsite but other than that you're not going to run these most of these appliances on, on definitely not going to run them on a battery pack but for most things that i've shown you you're usually going to run those when you're running off of shore power maybe running a generator and a few of the smaller things you can run off your solar systems or battery systems hope that was helpful Hope there was something of value in there. Have a great and wonderful day.